Well, I'm continuing my investigation, as it were, <clears throat> uh, or inquiry, I think is more apt, uh, into the question of how do people become famous? How does fame alight upon a person? Um, some say if you work hard for it uh, and you're met with the right opportunities, you know, it's a combination of uh, hard work and luck uh, or, or hard work and serendipity or uh, hard work and providence, however you view, you know, you know, stuff that's outside of your control uh, that happens to you. Um, you know, that that's that's sort of the standard answer. But it's been my uh, general perspective on this this um, this matter that it's uh, probably <clears throat> that that's pro that, that that kind of glib answer probably doesn't really cut it. Which is to say, um, well, my suspicion is that if you if you become uh, well, if you become famous, uh, if you become a celebrity, you either were uh, um, it's either the result of, of having been promoted, uh, having, been, having been plucked out and promoted uh, by somebody who's who's already. Uh, made, as it were, and I like to use the term. You know, they talk about a made man. But that's like that's a mafia term. I think show business is is uh, like the mafia, in just about every way, including the the, the murder. Um, and um, and it, it seems to me that that people who become famous, they <clears throat> they're they're either plucked out <clears throat> and uh, you know groomed. Uh, I know that's a that's a weighted term these days, uh, but but I think I'm using it advisedly, just the same. Or the other uh, the other uh, p uh, possibility is um, that uh, you show yourself extremely willing to do anything and to make any kind of sacrifice, uh, and uh, you have there's no limits to the kind of things that you will do for uh, someone who, <clears throat> who, uh, who has the power to make you famous. And, uh, you know, a, there's a lot that can be, a lot that I will leave to the imagination there, but you, I mean, you basically uh, get the gist of what I'm saying. You, you understand what's implied. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, your mind can go in a lot of places, and I'm telling you, where you, the, pl the places where your mind goes, it's probably even worse than that. All right, so I've talked about a couple uh, instances of this already. Most recently, I, I, I saw the documentary Sly about Sly Sylvester Stallone on Netflix and um, discussed how it purported to talk about or to cover his... his uh, his rise from obscurity to fame, but left out certain crucial um, uh, parts of that story. And today, I want to, I'm not going to spend as much time on, on it, but uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, the band Fountains of Wayne. You know, we're kind of going from a, an extremely famous movie star to maybe more of a, like a semi-famous, uh, you know, uh, um, I don't want to say fringe because they were, they were legit. Like they were, they were, they had busted through to, uh, to fame. I mean, they were playing on late night talk shows and they were, they, they had, uh, you know, uh, one song that, that charted, uh, and <clears throat> even with, even with the songs that of theirs that weren't charting, they were still, you know, show, their videos were being shown on MTV and they were, <clears throat> um, you know, doing, uh, 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 writing songs for, for movies, especially one of them, one of the two, uh, um, Schlesinger, the, uh, Adam Schlesinger, the, the, uh, who's written, or well, he, he died, uh, uh, in 2020, but, but, uh, but up to that point, you know, he, he had, uh, written numerous songs for movies and TV shows and, and so he, they were definitely in the club, even though they weren't, 
really like conspicuous in the same way that Sylvester Stallone is conspicuous. I mean, if you saw the guys in Fountains of Wayne <clears throat> walking down the street, you you probably wouldn't know who they were, um, and I might not know who they who they were. That, like, but and, and I'm and I'm a fan of theirs. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I like their music a lot. Uh, uh, so uh, they, they've basically come to an end because one of the the, the two main guys, one of the the the, uh, the main songwriters, died in 2020. They say of the you know what, but uh, the Wu flu. But uh, I'm extremely skeptical about anything uh, uh, that's related to that particular uh, that particular psyop. So I don't know what he died of, but I, I believe that he's dead. I'll, I'll, I'll give them that much. Um, and before that, uh, before his death, I think the band had already petered out and like they, they had sort of grown apart. Um, that's the impression that I have there. I think their last album was 2013 or so. Um, but I really like their music, you know, very, uh, the, very into harmonies, power pop, uh, uh, you know, the whole, whole power pop um, genre, which I've talked about before. But also they, they had some wry observational kind of uh, takes on certain, you know, uh, every man's uh, type of characters that, that sort of made them stand apart a little bit from uh, from other bands uh, that, that were, you know, uh, less... Um, I don't know that 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 uh, that they were more generic in their in the the kind of uh, subject matter that they tended to to cover uh, more forgettable, you know. You heard a Fountains of Wayne song, and it's like, oh, that's an interesting, uh, you know, circumstance, or that that's relatable, you know, like like their their hit Stacy's Mom. I mean, most of us can relate to that, even if we, we even if we haven't experienced it, we can relate to it. Um, you know, being in a situation like that. And that's, that's the way it, it was with, with most of their, their songs. That was part of their appeal for me. And I think, uh, for others, uh, other fans of theirs, <clears throat> anyhow, um, I, I was watching a documentary the other day, some, just something on YouTube that was about, uh, Fountains of Wayne and, um, and you know, th their, their career, uh, their rise to stardom you know, of a sort, um, you know, and I, it, uh, with the asterisk there that I, I, I covered earlier, there, there may not be, you know, big movie stars, big, big names, big uh, faces, faces that you would recognize, but, but they are still definitely in the club. So how did they get in the club? Well, this, this documentary or, or this, this YouTube video, uh, you know, sort of semi-documentary, said that they, uh, well, they, they were both, they knew each other in college and they were playing in, in other bands and then they, and then they got together and <clears throat> decided to record a, a, a demo tape of some of their songs. So they, so they did that and, and, uh, sent off their demo tape on cassette because <laughs> this was the nineties. Um, just sent it to some, uh, some major record label. And said, you know, just 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 a, just sent it cold, according to what what was you know the information uh, in this video. They just said, you know, I guess you know, typed something up, dear sirs, uh, this is our music. Uh, please, we, we we appreciate you giving it a listen, and uh, we would uh, we look forward to hopefully working with you in the future if you can make use of our work or whatever. Um, presumably with something like that. Uh, some kind of note attached. And then the studio said, Hey, you guys are good. We're going to sign you to a, a major a record label. Um, so, uh, yeah. Welcome to the team. <laughs> Fountains of Wayne. And I, I, I watched that part of the video flabbergasted because it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Not not in uh, not in anything that I have ever observed. Okay, um, just make myself a little bit more comfortable here. Uh, there was a time when I was in a band, like I've said before, and uh, you know uh, dabbled in that scene. Um, 
and I have a friend who's who's been in a band for a long, long time. Um, and you know, and here's here's what I would say. If you're somebody, if you're just just somebody out in the American heartland, but you're a genius and you're really talented and you're you're writing songs that are just fantastic, you know, very uh, very clever, very catchy, uh, you know, s songs that anybody, w you know, uh, you would imagine would, uh, that, that, that would, would get a following because it's good. It's going to appeal to people and so forth. Well, that doesn't matter here that this is my experience. It doesn't matter how talented you are. Uh, and, uh, it doesn't matter how good your music is. It, if you just send it cold, to some studio, they're not going to listen to it. <laughs> Why are they going to listen to it to to something recorded by, you know, a couple of nobodies out there in, in uh, uh, I don't know, wherever in New Jersey? That, that's I think that's where uh, Fountains of Wayne were from. You know, these are just a couple of guys from Jersey, so a couple of nobodies. What you know? So what? I don't want to. Uh, I mean. Uh, don't bother, don't waste my time with this, with this crap. Um, that's what, that's what the response would be. If there's any response at all, if it, if it isn't just chucked in the wastebasket. But this documentary was trying to say that Fountains of Wayne got their big break when they sent their demo tape into the studio cold, just a cold send, uh, presumably without any invitation, um, and they, and whoever it was at the, at the studio listened to it, liked it and signed them. I just, something is missing from this story. Okay. Because I know enough to, about how things work to know that it doesn't work that way. You have to have contacts. Um, you have to. I don't know. You, I don't even know what it is. I mean, that, that's, that's part of why that's part of, you know, if I knew more of what the formula was, uh, then it would be pointless for me. This is, this is like an inquiry. This is an ongoing inquiry or, uh, investigation, I guess. Not, not really, I'm not really investigating. I'm not going and poking into, you know, places and shining my flashlight anywhere and, and, uh, you know, confronting anybody and asking them, uh, you know, pointed questions, but uh, it is, it's, it's an inquiry in that I'm inquiring as to how this all happens. And I know for sure, it sure as hell does not happen that way. Um, uh, you know, it, no matter how good you are. And I think this, this could apply to other disciplines as well, to other, um, you know, other uh, types of art, uh, out there, uh, you know, when, if, you, if, if you're a writer, you, uh, and you, you've just finished your manuscript, you send your manuscript to Random House saying, to whom it may concern, <laughs> I know y'all don't know me at all, but this is a book that, this is a manuscript I just finished, and I hope that you'll, uh, you'll like it and maybe give, give it consideration, uh, to be published, you think you're going to hear back from them? Well, I mean, you may hear, you may get a form letter, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, <laughs> you may get something like, uh, that, that, uh, begins with, uh, uh, thank you for sending your blah, blah, blah. Whenever it starts with, whenever, uh, a letter that you get back starts with thank you, then, you know, it's no way loser. We don't want you. That's what they mean when they say thank you. <laughs> but that didn't happen to Fountains of Wayne. Lucky them. Now I, I like Fountains of Wayne. I'm glad that they were given a shot. I'm gl I'm glad that they that their music is out there to be appreciated by lots of people. But I'm telling you, there's something missing from that story, and I don't know what it is. And there's I'll probably never know. But just just don't bullshit me. Just, you know, like don't just tell me that you can send a demo tape. Uh, you know, cause I was around in the nineties. I was, uh, I was in a band in the nineties. Uh, we had a demo tape that we recorded and, you know, uh, 
I don't, I don't think we sent it to like, uh, uh, Capitol Records or, or anybody like that, but I, I, I know that it, I just know it doesn't work that way. All right. Um, so, uh, so anyway, I just wanted to register that, you know, just there's again, just like with the sly, uh, documentary, there's something missing there. There's some part of the story that they're not telling us. Um, and who knows if, if Adam Schlesinger's death might be in some way tied in to the biz. Um, I'm not alleging anything. I'm just, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, like I said before, I think, I think, I think show business is like the mafia in just about every way, including the murder part. Am I saying Adam Schlesinger was murdered? No, but I'm open to the possibility that he was. I don't know. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts about this, please feel free to leave your comments below. Thank you for watching.